made her an All-American, or at least in my mind, up to this <laughs> point. <laughs> she has looked every bit the part. Top five in the country in ERA. And takes on Gal Dallas. Good night here. And it's a first pitch strike against the Georgia center fielder who missed the series against Arkansas, a series in which Georgia lost. Coming into this one here in Knoxville, held her out due to an injury, back in the lineup today and feeling good. Pickens coming off her 11th complete game of the season on Friday night. And quickly ahead in the count, 1-2. It was interesting, though. Tony Baldwin, Georgia's head coach, told us he felt like his team hit Pickens better than Tennessee's other pitcher they faced yesterday, Peyton Gottschall. But it's a strikeout of the first batter of the game for Carlin Pickens. Picking up right where she left off on Friday night against the Georgia lineup that has struggled at times in SEC play, Amanda, to have timely hitting. They got it yesterday on a solo home run by Sarah Gordon, and that ultimately propelled the Dogs to a 3-2 victory. Well, this is a Georgia lineup that is very potent, one of the best home run hitting teams, not only in the SEC, but in the country. And they're senior led by players like Sarah Mosley, the seniors that have a ton of experience, have hit hundreds of home runs, driven in hundreds of RBI in their, in their lineup. And you see Pickens early today already bringing the heat 74 miles an hour is what she's throwing consistently at right now. And I mean, it is so difficult as a hitter to face that velocity. And is little to no reaction time, basically, with the ball coming out of her hand and how that ball just gets on top of you. Because she's throwing 74 now, but on Friday she hit 76 a couple of times. The one two to Sarah Mosley. That'll get you thinking a little bit if you're in the batter's yeah. box. Keep you on your toes yes. a little bit. Just wanted to see if you're guessing. Maybe I can get you to swing at that one over your head, maybe. Look at Tennessee head coach Karen Weekly, who led this program to a regular season championship and tournament championship for the first time in program history. Carlin Pickens, obviously a big part of that, Amanda, but what she's been able to do this year in the absence of Shelby Rogers, who obviously graduated after last season, has been spectacular for Karen Weekly's club. And Carlin Pickens has got the ball more often. Games one and game three, which is a change for her, whereas Ashley Rogers would have been the pitcher that got the ball in game one and game three last year, and for a majority of her career, she was the mainstay in the circle, but Pickens is taken over in that role. Jada Kearney at the dish here for Georgia. You want to talk about dangerous hitters in this lineup, riding an 11-game hitting streak with eight RBI over that stretch. And Jada Kearney had a hit against Pickens on Friday night. Actually is the one of the only hitters for Georgia to have a hit in both games. Emily Digby, the other fresh or the freshman that hits in this lineup, has had a great series. About three straight strikeouts to start the afternoon for Carlin Pickens, dialing it up. Miles an hour, she'll mix in that changeup. And that drop ball on both sides of the plate is going to be really her go-to. You're not going to see her work up in the zone a lot, stay at the knees, force a lot of ground ball outs, and occasionally mix in a strikeout. Really changed the game for Georgia when she came in in relief yesterday. Taking on McKenna Gibson here at the top of the Tennessee lineup. Batting in the leadoff spot for the injured Kiki Malloy. And if you're new to the series this weekend, Malloy has not played yet in this series, still wearing a boot. 
recovering from an injury she suffered late in the week in practice but they do expect to have her back soon and there is Malloy watching on without a uniform had played in 210 consecutive games for Tennessee until this weekend her presence in center field and her presence as a leadoff hitter for this program is special super athletic she is very missed when she's not in the lineup for this weekend and it was a surprise on Friday to see the lineup and not see her penciled into that leadoff spot and not out in center field and also a surprise actually to see McKenna Gibson as the leadoff hitter today Did a good job drawing that walk well this Tennessee lineup obviously without Kiki Malloy have to replace last year's national home run leader and somebody who this season has been hitting 355, but they managed five runs in a 5-1 win over Georgia on Friday night. And even without Malloy in the lineup, dangerous from top to bottom. Well, and in these two games, it's been the team that has scored first that would go on to win both yes. games. So scoring first is Always a mission for both of these teams, but it seems like this weekend, especially to be the aggressor and to get on the board early. Zeta Pooney at the dish for Tennessee. You know, it's interesting because we had a chance to talk with Tony Baldwin about that exact thing earlier this morning. And he said, you know, in some of these losses that we've had recently in SEC play, we've just gotten into holes early. And that's led to maybe a little bit more tension in the dugout trying to mount a comeback against some of the best teams in the country. It always feels better to play from ahead. It puts less pressure on your hitters and your pitching defense. Woo. This is the third straight day that Tennessee is facing Shelby Walters. Came in and pitched four and two thirds yesterday in relief of Madison Kerpix and was phenomenal. You can tell both of these pitchers trying to figure out the edges of the strike zone here early. And Walters, a senior that has had a lot of experience where she transferred over from Duke to this Georgia program. And then you have Pickens, who a little bit younger. And gets a strikeout of Pooney, one down. It's a pitch down in the zone that Walters can be so effective with especially getting a swing and miss and a chase out of the zone that drop ball just looked like it had really tight spin even looked like it was supposed to be more on the outside corner but instead of curving it just dropped down and Pooney swings and misses for the first out we saw Lily Backus start game one for Georgia and then Walters came in in relief pitch two and two-thirds we saw Madison Kerpix start game two for Georgia and obviously as we just mentioned Walters coming in relief for four and two thirds as West fouls off the first pitch. But she makes her first start of the series today. Amanda, does that change anything at all from an approach standpoint of your Walters? I don't think it does because Georgia relies so heavily on their pitching staff. She doesn't start this game thinking, I have to go out and, and throw a seven inning perfect game. I can't give, give up any run. She goes out and is just taking this inning by inning, out by out, knowing that Georgia likes to use all three of the pitchers that they rely on with Lily Backus and Madison Kerpix. And in a game three, you're just focusing pitch by pitch and not feeling like you're going to have to be out there all seven innings. If you are, more power to you. Right. That's even better, right? You want to be out there all seven innings, but just trying to go batter by batter here. Two one to West. And Tony Baldwin said, "Listen, we're just taking this out by out as a staff today, recognizing the importance of this game for both teams, but particularly for his Georgia team battling for an SEC championship." Shelby Walters is mixing in that changeup all throughout, but the difference but so far up to this point in that changeup is 
today. It's staying a little bit more flat. And yesterday's relief outing, she had some really good down and out movement to that pitch, got some chases. Kind of had the same track as that pitch right there, but it was her changeup that got hitters a little bit out of their comfort zone. And this is a great at bat here by the senior Riley West. Seen a lot of pitches. Having a career year at the plate is West, batting 342 for the Lady Vols. Rips it off the glove of Walters, and everybody is safe as Gibson moves up to second base. Riley West saw a ton of pitches in that at bat, a lot of different speeds, and Walters tries to get her glove up to that, but that ball was hit hard. That is so tough as a pitcher to deliver the pitch and then see the ball coming at you, react, get your glove up. If she would have been able to let that go, which it is very hard, it potentially could have been a double play as Sydney Cuomo is playing a little bit more up the middle of the field. A seven pitch at bat, one by Riley West. Woo. And here is Sophia Nugent. And a different lineup for Coach Weekly in Tennessee today. Things kind of got mixed up with Kiki Malloy out. You know that somebody's going to have to take that leadoff spot up. And Laura Mueller had been in that spot the first two games of the series. But not just mixing up the leadoff spot, mixing up kind of everything else underneath it too. And Mueller going from the leadoff to the five spot, Nugent batting in the cleanup position. <laughs> Two gone in the first with the second strike out of the day for Shelby Walters. Just felt like with the at-bats that Tennessee has put together in the setting that Shelby Walters needed a swing and miss, that she needed the strikeout. Bearing down with a runner in scoring position, goes with her curveball. That pitch was perfectly placed to get Nugent for the second out. And here is Laura Mueller with two on and two out. Well, there was a point in yesterday's game. Tennessee led 2-0 after the second inning. And then in the third, Tennessee played it two to tie it. And they were threatening again, Amanda. And you looked at me in the fourth inning and said, Georgia just needs somebody to bring some energy, to bring that spark. And it was Shelby Walters finishing the fourth inning with a strikeout. And that sort of changed the complexion of the game for the Bulldogs. Yeah, it was her leadership in the circle that really changed the momentum and seemingly the trajectory of the game. She just took over the game, only giving up one hit in her relief outing yesterday. 3-0 is a strike to the surprise of Laura Mueller. The fourth three ball count of the inning for Shelby Walters. And a walk to load the bases for Destiny Rodriguez. Shelby Walters throwing a ton of pitches in this first inning. 27 pitches, and we're not through the bottom of the first inning just yet. Great at bats put together by Tennessee. And as you mentioned, they've seen her twice already this series. This is the third time. And as you and I talked about yesterday, one of the differences that you've seen from this Tennessee team from February to March and now April is their patience at the plate. We're seeing that in this inning here. Swinging at fewer first pitches of the advance, swinging at fewer first strikes that they've seen. It's working the counts more. Base is loaded for Destiny Rodriguez. Rodriguez hitless in her last 10 at-bats, but has been a tough out. 
putting the ball in play nearly 70% of the time throughout the course of this season. And we're going to switch out the balls here for Shelby Walters. Well, and you'll notice, too, that Tennessee has a ton of right-handed hitters in their lineup. Everybody is a right-handed hitter except for Alana Leach. And kind of feeds into Shelby Walters with how she's pitched this season. Right-handed hitters are hitting about 120 points lower off of Shelby Walters. It's a good change-up right there. Better spot. Back and set down movement. Rodriguez this year, one for three with the bases loaded. Down on the count, one, two. This feels like a big moment very early in the game. Two, two from Walters. And as you mentioned, the recipe for success in this series has been scoring first. Tennessee plated two runs in the first inning. Game one on Friday, it was Georgia who jumped out to a 2-0 lead yesterday. Pop up to short, and Armistead puts it only anticipated women's national championship game ever with what Caitlin Clark and the Hawkeyes have been able to do, and of course, Dawn Staley and the Gamecocks, 36-0. Trying to go undefeated, run the table, win the national championship. I think 15, 16 million watching that tonight, maybe Amazing. more. Yes, I think maybe more. We'll see what that number is. The game has exploded, as has softball in the SEC and nationally, and this is one of the most highly anticipated series of the year across college softball. And it hasn't disappointed. Carlin Pickens back in the circle for Tennessee, struck out the first three Georgia batters. See, even her changeup is 60 to 63, Matt. That is the average fastball speed for quite a few Division I pitchers, quite a few pitchers who are playing collegiately at all divisions. But that's how hard she throws with her velocity. And then she gets you to chase at a drop ball like that that just falls off the table. But when you look at why she has excelled this year and grown from last year to this year, her fastball has improved. Last year, her fastball, the batting average against it was 236. This year, 147. And then with her rise ball, which she's throwing more this year, more up in the zone, also has improved by 50 points. So when you take those two things into consideration, her fastball command especially, for being able to spot it on both sides of the plate, right at the knees, that fastball sets up everything else. 1-0 count to Sydney Chambly. Karen Weekly told us last year when Carlin Pickens won SEC Freshman of the Year, she showed flashes of this type of brilliance. But the difference this year, along with everything you just mentioned, Amanda, is the consistency that we've seen from her in the circle. Well, and what they did in the fall, too, was knowing that Carlin Pickens has always liked to rely on her fastball, they took it away a little bit in the fall, not let her throw that fastball as much to be able to develop her drop ball, her rise ball, and her change up more. And she told me it's, you know, it's a little bit uncomfortable at first, but it's made her better. First contact in play today by Georgia, and it results in a ground out. And so the first five batters set down by Carlin Pickens. Two outs, and the base is empty now for Sid Kuma. And I think the best part when you hear Karen Weekly talk about 
Carlin Pickens is that she says she might be one of the most growth-minded, willing, coachable athletes I've ever been around. And her growth from last year to this year, even from when she was in high school to her freshman year in college has been tremendous. We even heard Coach Baldwin before the game talking about it. He saw Carlin Pickens pitch in travel ball and knew that there was so much potential in there, but maybe showed some lack of command and wildness at times. And now when you spot 75, 76 right at the knees on both, both corners is a game changer for her command and for her defense to stay as engaged as possible and for her to just dominate up to for her to dominate this year up to this point. Six earned runs allowed in the last 78 innings pitched for Carlin Pickens. And four of those runs came in a game against Auburn last weekend. I mean, look at the improvement in her ERA down over two points. Her walks are down, which has been in my opinion, one of the biggest things, that the changes that she's made is just finding that command to be able to attack hitters with her best stuff. Gets a strikeout on the off speed, sets down Kuma with her fifth strikeout of the game. Yeah, I, I loved that game against Arkansas and getting to hear him pull his hitters aside down the third baseline and talk hitting and approach and some little team huddles. I always appreciate just the insight to be able to hear how each of these coaches talk to their teams differently. And they each have their area of exper expertise too. Like Coach Baldwin is more of an offensive minded coach. He's their hitting coach. So you get to hear him talk about hitting. Beth Torina, more of a pitching coach. So you get to hear her talk about pitching. Let's see what Tim Walton. Fly ball to Kearney and Wright puts it away. Here's how Tony Baldwin sounded with a mic on his chest. Genuine reaction. So uh, much energy. Oh, yeah. Julia Kutsoyanopoulos to short and a sling from the sidearm position by Ellie Armistead, two gone. You know, that's something that this Georgia team has improved a lot on is their defense over the years. Got JT D'Amico to come over from Washington and get on their staff. This is more of a throw on the run, sidearm throw, quick release by Ellie Armistead, a senior in mainstay at shortstop since she's played on this Georgia team. But overall, their fielding percentage has increased since JT D'Amico has taken over on their staff. One of the best in the biz at teaching defense. And last year, Armistead was sensational at short. Started all 57 games and made just eight errors. Yeah, that's him right there, won a national championship with Washington. Woo. Great improvement. 976 fielding percentage for Georgia entering this game, which is their best since 2009. Their best fielding percentage ever is that 981 clip in 09. Some thin years for Georgia defense. The 950 fielding percentage back in 2017. Just gotten better and better since he's come in. Last year they finished at 972, and again right now they're at 976. Which has to give you some more confidence if you're in the circle like Shelby Walters. Knowing that you've got that slick defense behind you. Especially because she's more of a down ball pitcher. Rolls a lot of ground ball out to her infield. Or 2-2 two -two to Leach, misses inside. And a full count, two down, and the base is empty for Leach, who's making her third consecutive start. After not starting an SEC game all year, playing in center field in place of the injured Kiki Malloy. High hopper to Armistead, and a quick throw to first. A 1 2 3 sec. Point three, three, two seconds reaction time. So 104 mile an hour fastball is the equivalent in MLB terms. That stride, her length, her velocity, that ball gets on you in a hurry, and you have little to no time to react and decide to swing at a good pitch. You literally have 0.3 seconds to react. How? How is that possible? I'm not going to lie. I think you have to go up there and guess a little bit. 
kind of you sell uh, to sell out to one side and for sure to one speed. But that's why her changeup is so helpful with that velocity. If she was just throwing 74, 75, 76 all the time, like, yeah, that would be challenging. But you can start to get on time with that, even though it's one of the hardest throwers in our game. But then you mix in a 60, 61 mile an hour changeup, and poof, as a hitter, that just throws everything off. First three ball count of the day for Pickens. 3-0 to Miller. A strike. Well, Emily Digby and Ellie Armistead also do up in the inning for Georgia. They have yet to make hard contact against Pickens today. But the first base runner is aboard this afternoon for Georgia. A walk for Marissa Miller. And even a walk feels like an accomplishment. Her Georgia's dugout get up for that walk. Always feels good to get your lead off on board too. Well, it was interesting. Tony Baldwin's team produced six hits against Pickens on Friday night. That ties the most hits in a game that she has given up this year. And it's the first time that an SEC team has produced six hits in seven innings against Pickens. So he said, look, we were pretty successful against Pickens. They just couldn't quite get the runners around Amanda. They were 0 for 10 with runners on base against Carlin on Friday night. Which played it two. Which played it two. And Hot, the freshman, and a senior led Georgia team, but the lone starting freshman has been showing up against this Tennessee team. And came into the series one for her last 12 at the plates. By the way, Hannah Davila has come into pinch run for Marissa Miller over at first base. It's a good swing right there off of Pickens, too. 0-2 to Digby. And the batting average against Pickens this year with two strikes is 0-98. So below 100 when she gets two strikes, you're not in a good place in the box <laughs> usually against her. Good battle here by Digby. One of the things that Tony Baldwin told us about Emily Digby is that in spite of her average being lower than she would like it at, she just continues to be impactful at the plate, whether or not it results in a hit, battling against pitchers as she is here. I'm surprised to see her not go to that changeup. Try to throw that change up and bury it in the dirt. Maybe too, you have to be a little bit more careful because you have that runner at first base. You don't want to bury it too much in anticipation that it might get by your catcher. One, two in the left field and down for a base hit. Davila heading to third. Tony Baldwin waving her around. And she'll have to stay put at third because I'm not sure she saw Tony waving her home. But nonetheless, Davila goes first to third on a double by Emily Digby. Oh, that's a missed opportunity for Georgia. But first of all, Emily Digby, what in it bat? Fouled off several pitches, and Pickens did go to that changeup, but it just wasn't low enough. Digby is actually on time with it. Just drives that to the left center field gap, but Davila did not pick up Coach Baldwin, and even Riley West stumbled a little bit. The extra bases for Digby, and again, a missed opportunity for Georgia. As by the time that Riley West was stumbling out there on the warning track, Davila was already at third base, but decided to go too late. So that puts two runners in scoring position, and nobody out for Ellie Armistead. Batting in the ninth spot today for Georgia. Oh for four in the series is Armistead with a strikeout. 
But a massive opportunity here for Georgia and really the first of the day to do some damage against Carlin Pickens. How about your seven and eight hitters doing it against Pickens after five of the first six resulted in strikeouts? Amanda, you talked about it at the top of the show, but maybe outside of the Georgia program, Media fans wondering, okay, are the Bulldogs sliding a little bit because of how hot they were in the non-conference and then dealing with some adversity in league play? But make no mistake, this Georgia offense is one of the most potent in the country, and they're ranked number three in the country for a reason. I just kind of feel like they're just waiting to explode, just waiting to really get going. Armistead tried a bunt attempt. It's a strike, and now two and two. That's the first what you call a swing and miss, even though it was a bunt and miss of this inning. The first two innings, Carlin Pickens had seven swings and misses. This inning, it was zero through the first two hitters of this inning. What's changed? Shortening up their swings a little bit. And I, I think that walk by Marissa Miller, she took some pitches that more out of the zone. She didn't chase those pitches, but Carlin Pickens' command went away just a little bit. Marissa Miller was able to take advantage of it. Ellie Armistead playing the best ball of her career in the words of her head coach, Tony Baldwin. The 2-2. Goes down swinging a big time strikeout by Pickens, her sixth. One gone in the third. Just like in real estate, location, location, location. Just barely about a ball off the plate, right at the knees, gets her with the drop ball. Two runners in scoring position, and Pickens comes in clutch with a strikeout. And now Jaden Fields is going to pinch hit for Dallas Goodnight at the top of the order for Georgia. Fields had a career year a season ago for Georgia, has not been in the starting lineup as much this season, but a massive moment here in a pinch hit opportunity with two runners in scoring position and one down in the third. Dallas, good night. Had two strikeouts against Pickens on Friday night and started the game with a strikeout. So Tony Baldwin wanted to give somebody an opportunity off the bench to come in and see Pickens here. Fields, check swing went around according to home plate umpire Cameron Ellison. That's a great call. Fields did have one at bat against Pickens on Friday night in a pinch hit spot and delivers a fly ball to right field. It is caught by Panel and in to score from third is Hannah Davila. A one run lead for Georgia as Digby moves up to third. Jaden Fields made that look way easier than what it actually is to get underneath a Pickens pitch down in the zone. That pitch is also inside and her job in that at bat, another reason why she was put in this spot is to hit the ball to the outfield. Sacrifice fly for Jaden Fields to get Georgia on the board first. Two down for Sarah Mosley. And again, these teams splitting the first two games of the series. The winner in each of those games scored first. It was Tennessee on night one and Georgia yesterday afternoon. That's why those walks are so critical at any point of the year. Mosley to second, fielded by Rodriguez, and that ends the inning. But the Bulldogs strike first, Sunday night countdown. Bottom of the third at Sherry Parker Lee Stadium. 
And Tennessee trailing Georgia by one. With Shelby Walters back in the circle. And now the second time through the lineup for the Lady Vols. This is a place where Tennessee has been nearly unbeatable. Had an 18 game home winning streak going into game two of this series. Snapped by Georgia yesterday. Always great crowds. And today no different. Good energy in the building for this rubber match in a top five showdown between Tennessee and Georgia. Important after grabbing the lead for Shelby Walters to go right at these hitters. You just saw in last inning when Georgia scored what a leadoff walk can do. It helps your team score a run. Gibson to short. It is Armistead who has looked sharp at short this afternoon, one down. And she's covered a lot of ground, and Shelby Walters got back into that count and was able to get an out because of her changeup. Shelby Walters has a great changeup, but so does the rest of the Georgia pitching staff. Among Power 5 teams, Georgia has thrown the most changeups out of any school, and that's a significantly uh, a higher amount more than UCF and Missouri and Ole Miss, who also likes to like to mix in that changeup. But Shelby Walters has a great one. Madison Kerr picks as well. And Lily Backus, the lefty transfer from UNC, that's her best pitch. This Chelsea Wilkinson is our pitching coach. She is a former Georgia Bulldog All-American, calls the pitches. Zeta Pooney tails foul just right of the line. That could have been extra base hit trouble. But instead, we'll walk back to home plate. There's Lily Backus, the aforementioned. It's been a big addition to this Georgia pitching staff. Two transfers that get a lot of innings is Shelby Walters and Lily Backus to join Madison Kerpix. Now we saw Lily Backus in game one, three and a third innings pitched. Gave up two earned, four walks, four strikeouts before giving way to Shelby Walters. Well, and Karen Weekly, the head coach for Tennessee, talked about how in anticipation of facing Georgia, feeling like they were going to face two, three pitchers every game because that's just been how Georgia has rolled this season. Third strike out of the day for Shelby Walters and two down in the third. Goes to her curveball here. I just feel like Shelby Walters is living on that outside corner, going inside occasionally, but living outside with her curve, her drop, and her change up, mixing speeds on the outer half. Base is empty for Riley West. West, the only volunteer hitter to reach base on a single today. The other two reach base on walks. And that was on a hard hit ball up the middle that went off the glove of Walters. Could have possibly been a double play ball. Back in the first, Walters had bases loaded, two outs, got out of the jam, and has looked clean since. Two, two. That curveball is just moving.
There's Chelsea Wilkinson right next to Amber Freeman, who is also on staff right next to her. Played at Arizona State. Big addition for the Georgia coaching staff to bring her in. Of course, now you can have three assistants and your head coach, so the addition of the extra assistant has made a, a difference. West just laying off that in a full count. So Wilkinson with the hat on the right, Amber Freeman on the left. Karen Weekly compared Carlin Pickens to Chelsea Wilkinson coming into the weekend. Just their competitiveness in the circle as West fouls it off down the right field line. Well, and I think, too, that Chelsea Wilkinson had a great rise ball and took a little bit of speed off of it when she threw that rise ball, that rise ball being her best pitch, her bread and butter. And Carlin Pickens has worked on that rise yeah. ball, and when she throws it, takes a little bit off of it, too. All-American at her time at Georgia. Payoff from Walters. Hard ground ball to second. Kuma easily fields. Seven straight retired. For now joined by Georgia head coach Tony Baldwin. Coach, pitching at a premium in this series. We talked about that with you this morning coming into the day. Talk us through your decision to bring Jaden Fields in for Dallas Goodnight, producing the lone run of this game. Yeah, she's just been clutch her whole career. And, uh, you know, she came in, pinch hit on Friday night and had a good at bat. And, uh, just felt like it was a good time for her to, um, you know, to get a nat bad, and uh, she did what she's always done. Just super proud of her. Coach, what are you guys seeing from Pickens, and what are you hearing maybe from your hitters of what it's like to face that velo? Well, it's not easy. I mean, it's uh, <laughs> bring your work pail and, and go to work kind of a day, and uh, she's just got really good stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pleased with the way that we're competing. It's not easy in there uh, when she's got that kind of velo and the off speed's working so well. But, uh, you know, we had a good leadoff walk by Riss and a big hit by Diggs and, uh, you know, a clutch situational hitting by Jaden. So really proud of the way that inning worked, and we got a long way to go. Coach, appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, go dogs. Well, Emily Digby's been phenomenal in this series has the lone hit in this game and remember coming into the day had produced three of the four runs scored by georgia in this series mind you she's a freshman going up against some of the best pitching in the country and now in this inning georgia will bring kearney goodwin and chambly to the plate the middle of the lineup for the bulldogs against carlin pickens who has struck out six in the game Woo. Jada Kearney, of course, always a threat when she comes up to the plate to hit the ball out of the ballpark. One of the best home runs and home run hitters in the SEC. And you have to be so careful on the outer half. That's why you see, I think, Pickens going hard, and it's what she likes to do. But this is the pitch location of her home run. So this would be mostly on the outer half. And then also, I don't know what these pitchers were thinking, the five that were, like, right <laughs> down the middle against Jada Kearney. But you got to hit a corner going up against her. You can't leave the ball out over the plate. I think that's called a mistake. <laughs> I think so. It's a lot of mistakes that Kearney's getting. It's kind of shocking because... All-American at the plate, hits 20 home runs a season. But oftentimes it's on the middle to outer half, and you see Pickens here working her hard end at 74-75. Oh, 2 Seven strikeouts for Pickens. And just when you think she's going to go back hard in and she dots this one up on the outside corner right at the knees gets her to swing and miss through it I don't think that would have been a called strike but with two strikes you have to swing at it to protect and she's gotten her twice and now Jaden Goodwin at the dish Goodwin made first contact of the game against Carlin Pickens for Georgia back in the second inning. It was a foul ball. <laughs> That's the type of start that Pickens has had. Goodwin has been terrific in SEC play. In fact, seven of her 18 runs batted in this season have been in SEC play.
Rolls it to second base. Rodriguez to first, two away. And here is Sidney Chambly. In spite of her average being below 300, which she has never finished a season with a below 300 average, Tony Baldwin told us he thinks she can have a really big year for Georgia this season. Showed spurts, including the NCAA tournament last year, the regional and the super regional for the Bulldogs. Ahead in the count here, 2-1. And take strike two. Just hear the pop of that mitt, and you know that's a lot of speed, especially when Pickens brings that speed inside. She's not scared to go inside to left-handed hitters, seeming like something that she's worked hard on this year. Good rip from Chambly, foul down the left field line. But when 74, 75 comes inside to you, it feels even faster than that. 79, 80, it just, inside pitches are always going to seem faster to you. How could it feel faster than yeah. .332 reaction time, I which is the average that a batter has against Pickens? No words. Chambly closer to fair that time, just tailing left of the line. And you can see that the past couple of innings, Georgia has started to get off some better swings against her. They're going up now with four or five at-bats off of her. Going back to Friday night when she got the start and the win. Here comes the seventh pitch of this at-bat. And if you hear that noise in the background, by the way, it kind of sounds like a dolphin screech. That's <laughs> Madison Kerpik. So... I know there are some Texas OU noises going on in Austin the past couple of nights, but we have our own noises, and that is a that is a Madison Kerpix in the Georgia dugout. Slow roller back to Pickens, and the throw gets away. Chambly will move up to second, and now to third. And now she's going to be waved home, and the stop sign gets put up by Tony Baldwin. So a ball that went maybe five yards in front of home plate results in Chambly to third base. Carlin Pickens just let this throw sail, but it's one thing to have an overthrow, but it's a backup with Taylor Panel out in right field. She let that ball get back behind her. And as a backup, you are the last form of defense out there. You cannot let the ball get beyond. You can see Taylor Panel, the right fielder, late to get there. Then it bounces off of the wall. She was not at a, in a good angle to be a backup based off of where the throw is coming. And because of that, it's going to be Sydney Chamley over at third base. And it almost looked like for a second that Tony Baldwin was going to send her. But I'm sure uh, Chambly gave, was like, oh, I'm so tired at this point. I'm going as hard as I can. He gave one big arm yeah. circle. And then, and then the big up. stop sign came up from Tony Baldwin. <laughs> but now Sid Kuma at the dish with some insurance over at third base in the form of Sidney Chambly. Kuma struck out her first time up, but I think what we've seen Amanda is a lot of first pitch strikes the first two innings from Carlin Pickens and then in the third and the fourth Not nearly as many and Georgia taking advantage of that with their patience at the plate Well, it's funny that you bring up that first pitch strike Number and percentage because that's a big difference in Carlin Pickens this year from last year to this year last year her first pitch strike percentage 47% this year 59%, up 12% from last year, leading to her success. And in the first two innings in which we saw a lot of first pitch strikes, she struck out five of six batters. In the next two innings, we've seen just two strikeouts, and Georgia plating their first run of the game. The 3-0 for Pickens. 
Is a strike to Kuma. Usually a pitcher, Matt, is going to favor one side of the plate or the other. For Pickens, she's going to favor her arm side. So inside to right-handed hitters is the side she's going to lean more toward. Her fastball kind of screws in. Kuma, two-third. Scooped up by Gibson, and that will end the inning. So Pickens pitches around an error. We will change. Third time this weekend that your team is seeing Shelby Walters. What are you seeing from your hitters? And how are you making adjustments throughout the course of this game? You know, she's doing a good job of locating. I just want to see more intent in our swings. Uh, I think we're swinging the bat more than we did yesterday and the day before against her. Um, not being as picky, but, you know, now we've just got to have a little bit more purpose to our swings. Coach, you've been calling pitches in the SEC for a long time. What goes into calling pitches against the same team with the same pitcher that they've already faced in game three here? Hey, a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot of film study, both before you get in the series and then during the series. And, you know, just trying to stay one step ahead of them. And it's not easy to do against a, a team like Georgia. But, you know, our pitchers have executed tremendously well. Uh, Carlin did Friday night. Peyton, I thought, threw her best game that she's thrown all year yesterday. And I think Carlin's doing a really good job right now, too. Coach, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. So Tennessee will send Sophia Nugent, Laura Mueller, Destiny Rodriguez to the plate. And we'll see if there's some more purpose in their swing second time through the order against Shelby Walters, who was phenomenal yesterday, four and two-thirds, no runs, five strikeouts, and has looked really good over the last two innings, has set down seven in a row. As we start the bottom of the fourth here in Knoxville. It's been impressive to me the way that Tennessee's numbers have not fallen off from their non-conference games into SEC play. And you get into SEC play where the level of competition is so high every weekend and everybody knows each other so well and you're playing each other in three-game series like this. And it's, you know, it's usual for the ERA to go up a little bit, the batting average to go down, maybe score some less run or fewer runs. But, I mean, Tennessee and the SEC, they lead the SEC in all these categories in mm -hmm. ERA, fielding percentage, opposing batting average, and they've hit the most home runs. They've had timely home runs in SEC play. So the defending SEC champs at the top of the standings now and playing good ball against quality competition weekend in weekend out getting that clutch hit when you need it the most when it's a close game that's why they're at the top right now Tennessee had a 20 game win streak in March was the longest win streak in the country at the time, snapped by Auburn last weekend. Nugent, a pop-up to shallow right. Kearney makes out number one. When we asked Coach Weekly too, has there been a win this season that you felt like was a key win for your team? And she said she felt like the Clemson win was a key for them because they've had a lot of rainouts. They've had six canceled games, but to have that be a road game and pull out the win, I mean, she really liked the way they felt that that Clemson win was a big part of their season, but also how they've been playing game threes in SEC play. The intensity that they have been able to show in the Missouri series and then also against South Carolina it's one thing to win those first two games, but love the intensity that she saw in game three to get sweeps in those series. 1-0 to Laura Mueller. Walked her first time up, moving from the leadoff spot yesterday to the five hole today. However, she felt like last weekend in game three against Auburn when they had their first SEC loss in game three against Maddie Penta, that 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 business-like approach that she talked about was maybe missing a little bit. And I know that she wants to see that same game three mindset in a game three here today, trying to win the series against a top three team in Georgia. Tennessee, a game ahead of Florida as we start the day's activities in the SEC at nine and two and Georgia right behind them at seven and four. And so if Georgia's able to come away with a win here, 
You see Tennessee fall to nine and three. Georgia go to eight and four. And now things get really interesting in the top three to four teams in the SEC with still four regular season series to go. Texas A&M in that mix too. No doubt. In the upper half of the or upper four teams in the SEC. Boy, they had a battle last night <laughs> against Kentucky, didn't they? Oh, just a three hour and 10 minute game. No <laughs> big deal. 10-9 game. Got the win, won the series against Kentucky. Three two to Miller is a strikeout on the outside corner. The fourth K of the day for Shelby Walters. And now Destiny Rodriguez. Woo. Shelby Walters, what a start that she's having in this game. Particularly coming off her longest outing since February 23rd yesterday. Hard to believe too because she's been pitching well, but it goes back to your point Amanda, that Georgia has regularly used two and sometimes three pitchers in a game throughout the course of the entire season. Well, that's what Coach Weekly said was one of the keys to entering this weekend is what she called offensively selling out. She said, if we stumble, that's why. If we don't sell out and you know that you know going into it that you're going to see three pitchers. You just feel like you're going to try to catch up to everything. You know that a new arm is going to come in eventually with Lily Backus or Madison Kerpix, but what she called offensively selling out. And right now it's Shelby Walters who is controlling these at-bats and not the Tennessee hitters. 23 and a third innings pitched over the last eight-plus outings. For Shelby Walters, over that stretch has allowed just two earned runs. Slow roller to Kuma, and a one, two, three inning for Shelby Walters. The third. It's either you or a producer, James. <laughs> I avoided stepping on these beautiful pieces of art. Part of a big weekend here in Knoxville. We saw the Knoxville Marathon. We did not partake, we watched. And a Knoxville native actually won the women's division earlier this morning. High fly ball to right field by Marissa Miller, caught by Taylor Panel, one down. Carlin Pickens back in the circle for Tennessee. And if you're just joining us, she was unhittable, untouchable, really, over the first two innings. Struck out five of the six batters she faced. And then a walk and a double in the third gave way to a sack fly, which is the difference in this game. A one nothing lead for Georgia in the rubber match of this top five series. Of course, Carlin Pickens coming into this game with 15 wins. It was 7-8 ERA. And I mean, clearly has established herself as one of the best pitchers in the country this year, no doubt. Her improvement and growth this year has just been so high level and next level for her to take a step forward as a pitcher and as a leader for this team. And then, you know, you compare her ERA to other pitchers nationally and names that you're very familiar with, another sophomore of Nigeria Kennedy at Stanford. I mean, look at her ERA. Lexi Kilfoyle, who had a couple of shutout wins against Texas last weekend, and her ERA being six in Division I. And then Jessica Mullins at Texas State. A few of the pitchers that have the best ERAs in the country and led their teams this season. Just nasty stuff. I mean, Jessica Mullins at Texas State oftentimes gets overlooked because she's not playing at a Power 5 school, but Texas State is having a really good year. I believe even hopped up into the top 10 in RPI. Some of the best pitchers in college softball this year is Kennedy, Pickens, Kilfoyle, and Jessica Mullins. And now we will see the second pitch hitter, pinch hitter of the game used by Tony Baldwin. It is Sarah Gordon in the nine spot for Ellie Armistead. Bases empty, two outs here, top five in Knoxville. And remember yesterday, 
Sarah Gordon was the difference for Georgia. A home run in the fifth inning. Solo shot. The only hit allowed by Peyton Gottschall. And it resulted in a 3-2 win for Georgia. She transferred that ended up winning the game for Georgia. Came into the day hitting 175 on the year, Sarah Gordon. And produces what ended up being the game-winning run against what has been arguably the top pitching staff in the SEC to start the year. Yeah, and even Coach Weekly said that she felt like Peyton Gottschall had thrown her best game of the season yes. yesterday, and it was Sarah Gordon that had the one hit, the one blemish to her outing. There she is right there, number 33, Peyton Gottschall. Two two to Sarah Gordon. Flair in the center field. Back on it is Leach and a one two three inning for Carlin Pickens. To end the game, Tennessee was not able to take advantage of the leadoff walk, and when Georgia had a leadoff walk offensively, came around to score. Taylor Panel leads it off for Tennessee. Started game one. I beg your pardon, this is Alana Leach for Tennessee. Backhanded it short by Armistead. And that was the other Leach. That's my bad. Gabby Leach to short. Pinch hitting for panel. And one down here in the fifth. Another left-handed hitter getting an opportunity against Walter. She hit that ball hard, too, coming up. And that's one thing that we talked to Karen Weekly about. Not a left, lot of left-handed hitters in their lineup at all. In fact, with Kiki Malloy out, it brings Alana Leach in. She is the lone lefty in the starting lineup. So we'll have another pinch hitter here, too. Just Karen Weekly trying to get something going offensively off of Walters with some depth off the, vent, off the bench. And now Cameron Sarvis. Pinch hitting for Julia Katsinopoulos. <laughs> Walters. Dealing, the 0-1. You know, we actually asked Karen Weekly about all the right-handed hitters in their lineup, and she said, yeah, well, we have a lot, some left-handed hitters coming the next couple of years. Like, ideally, I want to be, and we need to be more balanced in terms of more left-handed hitters, but the ones who have earned positions this year happen to be all right-handed hitters. Flair to second, Kuma, gloves, two gone. And that is 12 straight retired for Shelby Walters. Now it's... Now it's Alana Leach. Now it's Alana Leach. Number 10, by the way, which is a very big deal in the Leach family. 10 is the Leach family number. Aubrey Leach, or 10, who played here, All-American here. Kelsey Leach, their sister, or 10. And then... Alana getting to wear number 10, and that's only because her sister Gabby got to wear 10 in high school. So now Gabby is 55, Alana is 10, but what does five plus five equal? Hmm. It equals 10. <laughs> I thought you were gonna give me a chance to answer that. <laughs> I didn't know. That brain I, buster. You, you weren't gonna have enough time to pull out your calculator, <laughs> so. <laughs> The 1-1 one, one to Leach. I think it's pretty cool to have a family number like that. They've all worn the number. They've all played softball at Tennessee. Not a tradition there. And uh, just a little bit more background on the number 10, because I know that everybody is just glued to the edge of their seats about this. In travel ball, all the Leach sisters, all four played for the same travel ball team, and obviously they couldn't all be 10. 
So Aubrey was 10, Kelsey 20, Alana 30, and Gabby 40. All multiples of 10. That's right. A flip to first. And the these two teams voted one and two in the preseason SEC poll. Still feeling like Georgia's still feeling like they're in the hunt. Of course, Tennessee is at the top, so you know they're feeling like they're in the hunt. But all those teams on the screen, honestly, are, are feeling like we have a shot at winning an SEC championship. A lot of ball to be played left this season. Remember, SEC play continues. Top of the hour right here on ESPN2, LSU and Florida in game three of that series. Beg your pardon, that is game two of the LSU Florida series. They'll be on Miked Up Monday tomorrow night for game three. Good night, foul. So a one and two count. Top of the order. Third time through the little order for Georgia. And still Carlin Pickens in the circle. Eight strikeouts this afternoon for the Tennessee Ace. Good night to short on a two hopper. Quick throw is not in time. Good night beats the throw from Laura Miller. And just the second hit of the day for Georgia. I remember they had six the first time they faced her on Friday night, but this is all it takes for good night with her speed to get down the line. A couple of hops is exactly what she wants as a slapper for that ball to hit the ground twice because it means it gives her more time to get down the line safely. Sarah Mosley. Foul on the bunt attempt. Dallas Goodnight leads this team with nine stolen bases this year. and was going with that pitch. Oh, rocket off the glove of Kutsoyanopoulos, and both runners are safe. That's the hardest hit ball of the day that we have seen off Carlin Pickens. They're going to make sure that Julia Katsoyanopoulos is okay. They're playing a little bit in because Mosley had just shown fun. ERAs in the SEC. And she looked so good yesterday, Matt. Six innings, seven strikeouts, didn't walk anybody. And she's going to bring a curveball on both sides of the plate and more upspin with her rise ball. So she'll throw that curveball back door inside to righties and also outside to them. And then she wants you to chase that rise ball like Jada Kearney just took right there. It's something that Coach Baldwin said yesterday they saw from Gottschall is that she was tunneling her curveball and her rise ball so well. The hitters were having trouble deciphering. Was it going to curve or was it going to go more up in the zone? Pickens, five innings, eight strikeouts, three hits and a walk. The runners aboard are hers. So the earned runs and runs allowed Still to be determined by Carlin Pickens. Here we go. Kearney, diving play at short by Miller, and they'll get the lead runner at third. Dallas Goodnight, what a play by Laura Miller. It's the type of play that you have to make when you are trying to win a series. Laura Miller got a good read off the bat, went down to her knees to steal this hit from Jada Kearney. And her heads upness and good communication to keep the ball in her glove, throw from that lower position on her knees, even around the base runner of Dallas Goodnight to get that lead out. Great play by the shortstop. She doesn't stop that ball with Dallas Goodnight speed. This is a 2-0 game for Georgia. And Emma Castori has come in to pinch run at second base for Sarah Mosley. As Jaden Goodwin comes to the plate for Georgia. 
That's the pitch the Georgia hitters were chasing a bit yesterday. They were taking her curveball, that deceptive spin that she has that were on the corners through the zone and then chasing that rise ball out of the zone. Good one to pop up, foul territory left side. Miller tracking it and has recorded back-to-back -back outs for Tennessee, two down. They trust Peyton Gottschall so much in these moments to come in with runners on base and nobody out. We saw her do it in yesterday's game too, come in with traffic and just go right at the hitters and get quick outs. Sydney Chambly. Who reached on an error in the fourth. Made it all the way to third base and then unable to score. With Pickens shutting the door to close out the fourth. Two on and two out here for Georgia. Dogs in this game, 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position. Started the inning with two on and nobody out to the Bulldogs. The 1 2. Check swing and she went around. Got him. A pinch hit. Sack fly by Jaden Fields of Georgia. Other than that, we've had a pitcher's duel. And Shelby Walters has been spectacular. Four straight innings of one, two, three baseball, softball rather. But on Friday, McKenna Gibson got the scoring started for Tennessee, Amanda, with this bomb to left field. That was the first inning, McKenna Gibson has Led the team in average and RBI and SEC play. Bumped her up to the leadoff spot in this game. We get her some more at bats and liking the at bats that she's been putting together. Batting in the leadoff spot for the injured Kiki Malloy. Missing her third consecutive game this weekend for Tennessee. Wearing a boot. More precautionary than anything we've been told and expect to have her back in the lineup very soon. Day to day with a lower body injury suffered on Thursday in practice. I'm sure it's killing her to just not be able to play after starting 210 games in a row. Especially in this series. Oh yeah. Vocal leader for this team, which is something that she can still be, even though she's injured. They could use their offense too, though, against the Shelby Walters in the circle who's been unhittable in this game. And you see Kiki Malloy's numbers. No doubt by the time this season's over, she will stand alone atop all of those categories. Already the home runs, already the program's all time leading home run hitter. A great at bat that Gibson's putting together too off of Shelby Walters and nobody from Tennessee has reached since the first inning. That first inning was a laborious one for Walters. She threw 33 pitches but then rebounded in that second inning and it's just continued to settle in. Eighth pitch of the at bat knocked foul. Got to go back to that first inning where Tennessee had the bases loaded third time seeing Shelby Walters this weekend and we thought hmm, this is interesting maybe Shelby Walters on the ropes here early closes the door and has pitched perfectly since the payoff so they're looking to see a lot about the, the Georgia coaching staff a lot about this at bat to Gibson just a one run lead late in this game and you know too that you have a couple of other capable arms that you've relied on all season long that Ready and able to come in, and Madison Kerpix on the right, and Lily Backus just to the next of her. And the tenth pitch misses upstairs. Your first base runner for Tennessee since the first inning. And it's McKenna Gibson with her second walk of the day. And 
they will bring Katie Taylor in to pinch run. Doesn't get easy with the top of this Tennessee lineup with Zeta Pooney coming up, a hitter that Karen Weekly said last year, I, th I think that she could be the most fearsome hitter in the country. A couple of strikeouts today, but a hitter like Zeta Pooney does not stay quiet for long. Pooney in the series, two for eight. Does have a double and two runs batted in. Has struck out twice today against Walters. Walters just all game long, Matt, has continued to work that outside corner. Different speeds, different heights. She's gotten really, I think, comfortable working that side of the plate, too, because of all the right-handed hitters that she's facing in Tennessee's lineup. She can just pretty much get on a roll and in a rhythm with that side of the plate. Pooney in the left, line right into the mid of Jada Goodwin, one down. Special gets it all started at 2 Eastern. And that championship game viewable on ABC. High fly ball to right field. At the wall, and it's off the glove of Jada Kearney. Riley West will slide into second base as she was sort of caught between first and second, wondering whether she should go back to the bag as Katie Taylor advances to third. Jada Kearney had such a good beat on that ball. That ball off of Riley West's bat just carried to right field. Walters goes back to that outside corner. West is looking for it, lets that pitch get deep. And Jada Kearney up against the wall. That ball was in and out of her glove. She had it. She was right underneath it, even though it was a hard play. Right up against the wall. You see her find the wall. Or at least it looked like her glove was there. Hard to tell if it just hit off the very top, almost a home run for West. But where Georgia got into a little bit of trouble is that they did not cut this ball coming in from the outfield. That ball went all the way to Sarah Mosley, basically at third base. And with that being said, Riley West was able to move into scoring position. Almost ran past the base runner there of Katie Taylor. But again, letting that throw come all the way through allowed West to get into scoring position. And now the go-ahead runs at second base. Heads up base running by Katie Taylor. As soon as she saw that ball hit the ground, she was thinking first to third. Coming in the pinch run from McKenna Gibson. He is challenging whether the hit to the outfield was a home run. Previous play is under review. And so the call has been challenged by Karen Weekly. To your point, did it bounce off the top of the wall or did it go off the glove of Jada Kearney? Yeah, we'll have to see if this actually makes it out of the, the field of play. It's like Jada Kearney is saying that it looked like it hit off the top of her glove. I thought it hit off the very top of the wall myself. At first, I thought it was her glove, and then the more that we looked at it, I thought it was off the top of the wall. Yeah, I think I think this has got to be upheld. I don't see that that is a home run. Worth challenging. I haven't seen any. The call on the field stands was not a home run. So Cameron Ellison. <laughs> is the uh, victim of some boos. The Tennessee fans wanted a home run there. They won't get it. But nonetheless, a great start to the inning for this Tennessee lineup with two in scoring position and only one out for the cleanup hitter, Sophia Nugent. It's funny how Sophia Nugent was a player that Karen Wickley told us that she actually recruited her heavily in eighth grade. Then 
Sophia, of course, transferred from Oklahoma, decided that that's where she wanted to go play softball, was there for a couple of years. But when Sophia went into the portal, Karen Weekly already knew that that was somebody that they wanted because they had recruited her so hard a few years back. And she, Sophia had actually been on a visit in eighth or ninth grade to Tennessee and then ended up going on to commit and sign with Oklahoma, but never even visited Tennessee this summer. And she already knew that she liked Tennessee and Karen Weekly knew that she'd be a good fit here at the program. Fly ball to right field, back on it, Kearney at the wall and gone! Three run homer, Sophia Nugent, and Tennessee takes the lead. The adjustment on the outside corner has officially been made. That was even on a changeup, and Sophia Nugent is able to recognize it, still let that pitch get deep, and she stayed so in her legs and on that changeup, drove it opposite field. Shelby Walters took speed off, and Sophia Nugent still hit that out of the ballpark. That looked like it was a no-doubter off of her bat. 225 feet in distance and a swing that puts her new team on top by two. And we are going to see a pitching change for Georgia. Heck of an afternoon. The fact that she held on to the ball is incredible. So, Shelby Walters out, Lily Backus in. Lily Backus, remember, started game one of this series and was knocked out rather early after giving up a two-run homer to McKenna Gibson to start the game. And Laura Miller, the first Tennessee batter to take on Backus this afternoon. Bases empty, one down after the three-run homer by Sophia Nugent. I feel for Shelby Walters in this game because of how well she pitched in those middle innings from the second through the fifth. Got in a little bit of trouble in the first where Tennessee came away with no runs and settled in. And just tell, like, the McKenna Gibson at bat to lead off this inning with the walk, fouled off several pitches that Tennessee just had a different mindset going into this inning. Zeta Pooney, that hard line drive to left field, and then Riley West. Almost hit it out of here. I'm surprised, actually, in a way, in hindsight, it's 2020, but I'm surprised that they didn't make a pitching change earlier than what they did. But I, I think just giving Shelby Walters a lot of credit with how she's pitched today is her game to lose or win. A walk to Miller. Well, to your point, Amanda, Walters went four straight innings without allowing a base runner for Tennessee. In fact, she faced the minimum over a four inning stretch after walking a couple and giving up an infield single in the first. This is the first time all day that we've seen her look vulnerable on a slow roller to third, Mosley to first, and Destiny Rodriguez is out as Miller advances to second. Two down now for Taylor Panel. Yeah, it just feels like too mad in these games that Georgia has lost recently. It's been the big home run that has helped contribute to their, some of their losses against Arkansas. And then here in the Tennessee series, remember Gibson hit that home run in the first inning off of Lily Backus, a multi-run home run to get on the board first. Some multi-run home runs that just tend to hurt you more. And... Looking at Tennessee's pitching, the two home runs that they've given up have both been solo home runs this weekend. What a turn. And you know, I go back to what Karen Weekly told us when we had a chance to speak with her a couple of innings ago. She said she wanted more intent and purpose at the plate. Well, McKenna Gibson gave them that with a leadoff walk to start this inning. And then patient hitting from Riley West. And of course, Sophia Nugent with a home run. And now Miller drawing a walk against Backus stands at second base. Panel, high hopper to Mosley. 
And that will do it in the sixth. So we head in with baseball tonight. And it's a first pitch strike to Sidney Kuma. Peyton Gottschall back in the circle was outstanding in six innings yesterday in relief against this Georgia lineup. Did have the one mistake, a home run to Sarah Gordon. But what an inning, last inning. Amanda came in with two on and nobody out and closed the door on this Bulldogs lineup. We talked about it, the momentum that she brought and the energy, the passion and the competitiveness that she brought in the circle when she entered in that game with no outs, runners on, was the turning point for Tennessee. She means business when she is in the circle, undoubtedly. And uh, everybody loves to play back behind her, but she definitely brought a spark to this team. And a strikeout back to back for Peyton Gottschall. And one down in the seventh. This rise ball has been money this weekend for Peyton Gottschall. Not throwing it too high, being able to get a chase out of the zone. Nasty spin and movement on that pitch this weekend. Marissa Miller who has walked and scored in this game. The lone run scored by Georgia. That was back in the third. Look at Shelby Walters, who was so good in her third appearance of the weekend for Georgia today. Handcuffed, floating over Gottschall, drops, throw on the run is made. What a play at short by Laura Miller. She's stepped up defensively in this game, no doubt, especially late in the game. In different ways, Laura Miller has made plays, one up the hole, and then this one up the middle gets the perfect bounce right into her glove where she can transfer that ball to her hand and get rid of it quick for the out. Beautiful. And remember, she had that play a couple of innings ago, diving at shortstop, which saved a run, at least one. So Georgia down to its final out. And it's Emily Digby, who has produced three of the five runs scored by Georgia in this series. Down in the count 0-2. Man, did this game turn quickly. Shelby Walters went four straight innings without allowing a base runner to Tennessee. And then in the blink of an eye, the Vols put two on and a three-run homer by Sophia Nugent put Tennessee in the driver's seat going into the final inning. And here we are. Gottschall with an 0-2 count. And I'm telling you, Gottschall coming in was the absolute difference maker for Tennessee. Back against the wall, already down by one run at the time, couldn't stand to give up anymore. Gottschall coming off what her head coach, Karen Weekly, characterized as perhaps her best outing of the season. Six innings. One run allowed in a losing effort to Georgia. Bulldogs snapping Tennessee's 18-game home winning streak yesterday to level the series at 1-1. One and, one. and the rubber match today did not disappoint. And the 1-2 rings up Digby on the outside corner. Gottschall closes the door on. Thank mm -hmm. you.